Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. Right, Brother Thawam. Coming back at you with these precepts and another cold cut. Giving first all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shah being the name of his only begotten Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Right? And the earth is flat. Right? The earth is flat. If you're going to go off of what Esau tell you, you're going to listen to NASA, then you're going to be deceived. Right? You're going to be deceived by the serpent. Right? NASA, deceiver. See that? But when you're going to go into these scriptures, we go into these scriptures and you're going to realize that the earth made, the earth is made a certain way by the most high. Right? So we're going to start off with um, Job 38 and 14. Job chapter 38 and verse 14. All right. I'm going to start at 13. It says that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment. Right. So when you take a clay, right the uh, seal on the signet ring and you mash it to the clay, your seal, right? Your seal is a, is a circle. And then you mash it down on the clay. That's what they use to seal up different letters or that's what they use to seal up cer uh, certain scrolls that they use for messages. And the so-called king or whoever it is, he will put his signet ring and kind of stamp down on it, right? So when you go back to... um. 14, it says, it is turned as clay to the seal. They stand as a garment, right? The ends of the earth, they stand as a garment, which you will perceive to be uh, uh, Antarctica on the globe. The Lord said that that's, what, that's, the, that's the edge of that ring, right? Now, it's going to get a little deeper. Let's go into Psalms chapter 19. Psalms 19 and 1. He says, the heavens declare the glory of the Most High, and the firmament show of his handiwork. What is the firmament? What is the firmament? The firmament was created on a second day of creation, right? We're going to get this. Genesis chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, And the Most High said, Let there be a firmament, in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So you have a firmament dividing the waters from the waters, right? Verse seven, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so he divided waters from under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament. And it was so. What is the firmament? When you go into the um, the Strong's Concordance, the firmament is H7549. Firmament, H7549, right? And they say it, um, it's uh, Rakia, Rak Rakia, right? In the Hebrew, right? In the, in the modern Hebrew. But when you go into the definition, the definition of firmament it says um, an extended surface. It says a solid, extended surface, solid, firm, firmament, surface, solid, right? Expanse, right, is another word. Expanse, flat as the base, support. An expanse, an expanse with a flat base, support. It's, it's all starting to come together. The firmament was created by the most high to separate the waters above from the waters below, the firmament is a physical thing, right? And it has a flat base. This is all scriptural. This is what the Bible is teaching, right? Um, what was I? Let me finish this in, um, in Genesis, right? Verse number eight, Genesis one and eight. And God, and God the most high, called the firmament heaven. So when you're reading about heaven, when we're talking about on a physical level, we're not talking about the spiritual heaven or we're not talking about the third heaven where the most high dwells. We're talking about our heaven, the sky that we see down here. 
It says, and the most high called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. So there you have it. So the second day of creation, you had a firmament created, dividing waters above from waters below. And you say nothing about no uh, Big Bang Theory. And you say nothing about no whole bunch of space and all this other stuff, right? It's waters above, it's waters beneath, and you have the firmament, which is called the heaven, right? Now let's jump down to verse 14. Verse 14 says, and God called Salaki, Salaki. Verse 14 says, And the Most High said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So here it is. You got this solid expanse, and then you have lights inside the firmament. You got the heaven, and then you have a firmament inside the heaven, right? Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the Most High made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. The moon, the sun, the stars were all created and set in the firmament. Verse 17, and the Most High set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So once again, you have this firmament, you have this firm, this uh, solid thing with a flat base, a support, dividing waters above from the waters below. The sun, the moon, and the stars are in the firmament. That's what's being, that's what's being described here in Genesis. When you go through the um, through the precepts and you get the understanding, it's telling you playing upon tables that the earth is made a certain way. And it's not a globe that's being described right here. It's not a, a, a sphere or a ball being described. Right? Let's go to um, Job 37 and 18. We're going to get in this, uh, this firmament business. Right? Let's get this understanding of this firmament. Job chapter... 37 and verse 18 says, Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? This, the Most High said that the sky is strong and it's like a molten looking glass. You see that? He spread out the sky is strong and it's like a molten looking glass. Where else do you see this? Molten looking glass being mentioned. Revelation chapter 15, right? And verse number two. Revelation 15 and two says, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. You see that? A sea of glass being mentioned again. In Job, he said the sky is strong as a looking glass, right? And in uh, Revelation 15 and um, 15 and 2, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. So those elect, those people that are, uh, those Israelites that endure to the end and receive salvation, they'll be standing on the outside of that glass, looking down, seeing their destruction happen on this earth, right? But there it is, that that uh, 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 solid surface, that expanse, flat base support, dividing the waters above from the waters below, right? Let's go to um, 2 Ezra 16 and verse 59. 2 Ezra chapter 16 and verse number 59, right? He spreadeth out the heavens like a vault upon the waters. He founded it, right? He spreadeth out the heavens like a vault upon the waters. Hath he founded it, right? He spread the heavens, the sky, the firmament like a vault 
What's a vault? When you get into the definition of the word vault, the vault of heaven, um, the vault of heaven supporting the waters, a vault, when you get into the etymology, it says it's um, like an arc, an arc roof or an arc ceiling. So an arched roof or an arched ceiling. So you have a flat base with an arched roof or an arched ceiling. That's the vault of heaven. That's the firmament. And it's uh, as a looking glass, right? A solid expanse dividing the waters above from the waters below. <laughs> as a vault in the top shape, flat base. You see that? So this firmament that's being described in the scriptures, this is all supporting the idea of the earth being, um, we say flat for the lack of better terms, but you, uh, you understand that we have mountains. You have sea level. You got above sea level and you got below sea level. So it's not going to be, you know, just straight flat like a book, right? You're going to have mountain ranges and valleys. You're going to have, like I said, above sea level and below sea level. But even with water, water's always going to level up. You've never seen curved water. You've never just seen curved water sitting. When water sits, it levels up, right? Um, where else we go? Where else we going? Um, Isaiah forty-four, Isaiah forty-four and twenty-four, right? We're still getting into the firmament and how the firmament is spread, right? Isaiah forty-four and twenty-four says. Thus saith Yahweh, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am Yahweh, that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So he made the heavens to spread above, uh, um, abroad the earth. He made the firmament to spread over the earth, right? But remember, it got that flat base. So it starts at the bottom, it goes up, and then it comes back down because it has that vault, that arched roof, that arched ceiling, right? Um, go to Job 26 and 11, right? Job chapter 26 and verse number 11. Job 26 and 11 says, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof, at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power and by his understanding, he smiteth through the proud, right? But the pillars of heaven tremble, right? So you, you can't have trembling without something solid there. You get what I'm saying? You can't have trembling without something physical. You know, water don't tremble. It, it may uh, uh, vibrate, it may be shaken up, you may have the waves, but water doesn't really tremble like that, right? And then an, um, another thing we're going to get on, check this out, in Sirach chapter 43, Sirach chapter 43, and I'm going to start at verse um, 11, Sirach 43 and 11, it says, Look upon the rainbow, right? Hey, watch this. Look upon the rainbow and praise him that made it. Very beautiful it is in the brightness thereof. So now we're on the rainbow. Look at the rainbow. It's beautiful, right? Very beautiful. It is, so like it, very beautiful it is in the brightness thereof. Verse 12. It compasseth the heaven about it can pass the firmament about. It can pass the heaven about with a glorious circle. You see that? With a glorious circle and the hands of the Most High have bended it. So us standing on the ground, when we look up and we see a, a rainbow in the sky, a rainbow, we see, a, we see that. That's all we see is that bow. But the scripture is telling you that the rainbow is a circle. Meaning that the sky, the, the heaven, the firmament is so large that when you see a rainbow, you only see the arch of the rainbow, but the rainbow is actually a whole circle. You see that? Now, Esau give you the truth without giving you the whole truth. 
Meaning, what are the elements that are take that it needs? Uh, what are the elements necessary to see a rainbow? In order to see a rainbow, you need three things. You need light. You need water molecules and you need a reflective surface. Light, water molecules and a reflective surface at a certain angle. That's how you uh, get that creation of a rainbow. So let's break this down. Light, the sun, right? Water molecules, the clouds. The sun is the light. The water molecules is the clouds. What's that reflective surface? How about the firmament? How about that looking glass? You see that? That looking glass, that firmament, that's that element that the light is bouncing off of to create the rainbow that we see. And like I said, we so small, when we see a rainbow, we just see the arch, but it's a whole circle according to Sirach, chapter 43. See that? So. We got to come out of these lies that these indoctrinations that they put on us. The earth isn't uh, wasn't created off of no big bang. Everything is not just by chance. This all is designed by the most high God, right? The most high, Yahweh, 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 Shah and the angels, they created this earth and he, he gave you the blueprint in Genesis. He created the waters above, separated from the waters below. You got the firmament separating them. You got the sun, the moon and the stars in the firmament. And on these, on whatever day the Most High, uh, you know, declares it, you may see a rainbow in the sky. And this rainbow is a reflection of the water molecules passing, um, the the light passing through the water molecules, which is in those clouds, and um, reflecting off of the firmament. That's what the Lord said, right? Now we're gonna get into um, the sun and the moon. Right, the sun and the moon. Genesis chapter one. We start at verse 14. And I'm gonna read down to 18. Right? And the most high said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And the Most High made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, the moon. He made the stars also. And the Most High set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And the Most High saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So on the fourth day, the Most High created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he set them in the firmament for the seasons, right? So let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 19. Because when you, leave it to, um, when you leave it to Esau, when you leave it to NASA, first of all, everything that uh, uh, Babylon, everything that Babylon knows about um, space, they know from, from NASA. Like, Everything that's known about space and stars and all of this other folly, you got it from NASA. That's where it all stems from, right? But what did the Lord say? Because if you leave it to NASA, you have the Earth moving around the sun. That's what they call the uh, heliocentric model. But the Earth, the 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 Most High, the Scriptures are describing a geocentric model. Heliocentric means the sun is in the center. Geocentric means the earth is in the center and everything moves around it. So let's go to um, Psalms chapter 19. And let's see what the Lord said. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 4. Psalms 19 and 4 says, Their line has gone out through all the earth and their, and their words to an end of the world and them that have set a tabernacle for the sun, right? Let's read that again. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And them, so like it, and them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, right? 
which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Right? Now, in this, you got the um <laughs> you got the sun, right, being set in the tabernacle. Right? Now this is parabolic, but for this uh situation for what we're going into, you have the sun being set in the tabernacle. Verse six, it says, His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuits, right, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So the sun is on a circuit in the heavens. The sun is on a circuit in the heavens. It goes from our small standpoint. We see the sun coming from one end of the earth and then it goes into the other. I mean, from one end of the heaven and then it goes into the other end and it's on a circuit, right? The sun, the moon and the stars are in the firmament, right? They're in the firmament. So the sun has a circuit. Right, let's get this in first Ezra chapter 4 and verse 34. First Ezra 4 and 34 says, O ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in his course. Swift is the sun in his course. The sun is on a circuit, the sun has a course. Where he goes from one end of the heaven unto the other end of the heaven, right? He's, he has a course, right? Swift is the sun in his course, for he compasseth the heavens round about and fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day. So in one day, right? 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness, the sun makes a course and he goes back to the place he started at. And this is just a continuous thing. Each day, the sun goes around. It starts from one place and it goes back around to that place. So if any 24-hour period, the sun is going to be where it was 24 hours prior to. It's swift in its circuit. It's swift in its course. Right? It's not necessarily 24 hours, but roughly. Right? So let's go to uh, Joshua. Right. Another witness to how the sun actually um, is circling the earth and it's not the earth circling the sun. So like you when Joshua uh, chapter 10 and verse 12. Joshua chapter 10 and verse number 12. It says, then spake Joshua to the most high. In the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, right? Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou, moon, in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun is standing upon Gibeon, and the moon is standing in the valley of Ajalon. How? How if the earth is going around the sun and the sun is supposed to be uh, 90 million miles away, how does the earth, I mean, how does the sun sit above a mountain? That don't make sense. How does the moon sit above a valley? That doesn't make sense. But it will if you have a firmament, you have the sun and the moon and the stars inside the firmament and they're on a course. That's when it starts making sense, because if it's in the firmament and it's on a course, you can have it stop at a certain spot or the most high can have it stop at a certain spot. And that's where the rest at. And that spot very, very well may be Gibeon or the Valley of Ajalon. You see that? Right. Verse uh, 13, it says, and the sun stood still. Now, if the earth is moving around the sun, why is the sun standing still? It should be already sitting still, right? And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. The sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. 
So the sun didn't go down a whole day. See the sun in the heaven? From our standpoint, see the sun, it rises up and then it goes down. But the sun never went down. It didn't go down for a whole day because of the request of uh, Yahweh, uh, of uh, Joshua that the Most High, uh, you know, took heed to. Right? So the sun, the moon, and the stars, they're on a course over the earth. Right? And let me get this in... Um, Sirach 43 and 4, just to prove that one more time. So like it's Sirach 43 and verse number 4. It says, a man blowing a furnace is in the works of heat, but the sun burneth the mountains three times more, breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright beams it dimmeth the eyes. So the sun in this creation, the sun is very bright, right? Obviously, we go out, we see it every day. The sun is very bright, and it's brighter than um than those people that um that uh work glass, right? Working in the uh, in the furnace, right? Verse number five. Great is the Lord that made it, and at his commandment it runneth hastily. Right. So the most high created the sun, the moon and the stars to go around the earth to rule the uh, the day and the night. So we can know the, the, the night from the day. And so we have uh, so we'll know the times and the seasons that we're in. Right. They have their purpose. So, like I said, you leave it up to Esau. You got the earth moving around the sun and then the earth is damn spinning. And it's going around the sun and you got all this other stuff going on. The Lord ain't say all that. The Lord ain't say all of that. Right. He made it simple for us. Right. And I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to get this to you. So you. And um, Genesis 1 and 9. Right. Now we're going to talk about the earth a little bit. Genesis 1 and 9 says. And the Most High said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And the Most High called the dry land earth and gathered together of the waters. So like it. And the gathering together of the waters called he sees and the Most High saw that it was good. Right. So now we're getting into the earth. Right. Let's read this in um, 1 Chronicles 16 and 30. And go to 1 first, first Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 30. It says, Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable that it be not moved. So, Scripture is telling you that the earth is not moving. Let's go to Psalms 96 and 10. Scripture's telling you that the, the earth is not moving, but NASA is saying something completely different. Psalms 96 and 10 says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Right? So, once again, the world, the earth shall not be moved. Right? So, these are things that are being um, being basically stamped with the Most High, man. The earth don't move. You got the firmament separating. Them. Once you get into the firmament, the firmament destroys the whole idea of the Big Bang Theory and all of this other stuff. It like, because ain't NASA never spoke about a, a glass arch being over the earth. They never spoke on that. Right? But the Lord is. Psalms chapter 75 and verse 3. It says, The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear it up. Salakia. I bear up the pillars of it. Salah. Right? So the Lord is saying that the earth don't move. He's saying that because the earth, he set it on pillars. Right? He set the earth upon pillars. Right? 
Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 2 and 8. So like it. Yeah, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8 says, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes, to make them inherit the throne of glory. Right? Hey, and real quick, hey, if you uh you you keeping these commandments and, and, and you being uh faithful and true to the most high, you worship him in spirit and in truth, and you keep the commandments and the faith in Yahweh Shah, the Lord will raise you up from whatever low estate you may be in, whether it be financial, whether it be health, whether it be uh relationships, the Lord will lift you up out that situation. Right? I just wanted to throw that in there. I'm gonna start over verse eight. Uh, 2 Samuel 2 and 8. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. Right? Yasha Allah, Israel, prince of power, prince of God. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. Check this out. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he have set the world upon them. The pillars of the earth are the most high and he set the world upon them. I mean, you kind of kind of ain't no way around it. The earth does not move. The earth sits on pillars. Why do you think when you lay down, you don't feel all of this movement that's supposed to be felt? If you're on a globe or a ball that's rotating and spinning around the sun all at the same time, why you don't feel nothing when you just lay down? Because nothing's happening for you to feel. The earth sits on pillars and it does not move, right? Let me get another one in uh, Job 9 and 6, right? Job chapter 9 and verse number 6. And it says, Which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble. So, once again, the earth sits on pillars, right? The earth sits on pillars. The earth doesn't move. The sun, the moon, and the stars are over the earth, and they're inside the firmament. The firmament has a flat base. It has a, a vault, an arch ceiling, right? And that that is where we are. That's the heavens, all right? Job um, 38 and verse 4. Job 38 and 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. So that's the foundations of the earth. You got the pillars, right? You got the uh, the sun and the moon and the stars inside the firmament. You got the firmament separating the waters below from the waters above, right? And you got all manner of uh, uh, beasts of the field and the cattle and mankind all dwelling on the earth. You got the fowls of the air, which are in the heavens. And then you got the damn, the fishes of the sea. Right? Right? Let me get this last precept. Isaiah 48 and 13. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 13 says, My hand also have laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand. So like in my right hand, have spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. You see that? So the Most High created the earth in such a way. And to be honest, the best way to uh, the best way to compare the description of the earth is the damn uh, uh, snow globe. The snow globe is the best idea of how you can describe the earth. You got the glass. Right? You got the glass joint, you got the base of it, you got whatever inside of it, and then you got the waters in there. And that's the best way to describe it. Inside, that's all everything that we know about on a physical and a carnal level. Your mountains, your hills, your trees, the buildings, the people, the animals, the fishes, all of that is in is inside that 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 glass. That glass represents the firmament. Right? The sun and the moon and the stars are inside, right? And on the outside, hey, that's the most highest dwelling place. The scriptures is the best thing we got to know on what's going on out there. 
That's the best thing we got. We we have accounts of what's going on, but to be honest, we don't know no. We ain't seen it with our physical eyes because they'd bug us the hell out, right? But I'm going to read this one more time and close it up. Job 38 and 14. Job 38 and 14. It is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment. So when you press down on that seal ring, <laughs> you get that damn, you get that circle and then you get your whatever imprint that is on that seal. And that right there, that's the best description of uh, the earth and what it looks like from on high. Right, and with that, all honor, all honor and glory goes to Yahweh Ba Hashem, Hamashiach, Wamalak Yahweh Shah, Kwam Yashal.